Hello, everyone. I'm Quita Highsmith, Vice President and Chief Diversity Officer at Genentech. And I want to thank Black Health Matters for inviting us to the conversation. As many of you know, diversity and inclusion in clinical research is multifaceted. It's complex. And there are a whole host of systemic issues, and there is no magic solve. It is grinding hard work that needs commitment and still resolve to get done. And we have to be transparent, intentional, and bold in our efforts to make lasting change. At Genentech, we believe in a world where all individuals have access to the best quality healthcare and a future of science that is more diverse, inclusive, and equitable. But there are real challenges and well-characterized disparities in clinical data and genomic research. And we believe more needs to be done to ensure clinical research participants are more representative of the broader patient population. We started an initiative called Advancing Inclusive Research. And before I was the Chief Diversity Officer, I led Genentech's Alliance and Advocacy Relations Team. And a few years ago, we were planning a patient summit for the organization. And I wanted to include a diverse set of patients that had participated in our clinical research. But guess what? We couldn't identify one patient of color that had actually participated in a study. And I began to ask the question, why? What I found out is that fewer than 10% of US patients participate in clinical trials. And of those, only five to 10% are not white. This gap extends to every aspect of the clinical journey, the inclusion exclusion criteria, the diseases we choose to study, who the investigators are, where the research sites are located. And as a result, the genetic data available to scientists doesn't reflect the majority of our di diverse global population. And this experience, led me and a colleague to co-found Advancing Inclusive Research, Genentech's initiative to address barriers to clinical research participation for racial and ethnic minority groups. Our approach is threefold. One, recruit more representative population by prioritizing clinical development interventions. Two, enhance diversity of the data, better match the patient populations to the diseases to enhance personalized healthcare to optimize patient treatment. And three, build external coalitions and partnerships with Black and Latinx communities. Go where the people are. I call it the three Bs, the bishop, the barbershop, and the beauty salon. Having diverse populations in clinical trials is critical since it provides an ability to address inequities in health and help us understand the impact of medication on diverse populations. But let's talk real, real talk with Q. The needle has not moved that much in decades. We are consistently seeing underrepresentation in clinical research. Even in those trials where people of color bear a higher burden of disease, prostate cancer, triple negative breast cancer, multiple sclerosis, and we have to think about what needs to be done to make sure these trials are more equitable. And there are well-known institutes that perpetuate distrust in trials, especially among Black people. Let's think about the Tuskegee syphilis, syphilis study. In order for us to build back this trust within these patient populations, we must actively speak to communities about the value of research and explain why they should participate. A key part of this work is talking to patients, engaging and building trust with communities to help them understand and help us understand their healthcare experience, what their needs are, what are the obstacles that have prevented them from participating in clinical trials. It is imperative that we listen, that we gather insights and that we address these obstacles. Patients participate in trials to help other patients like themselves. And previous research has also shown if asked by healthcare providers, the value of clearly explaining the participation, people from the community will feel a sense of obligation 
to participate. And we know we cannot do it alone. That's why programs like Black Health Matters are important. And we commend the efforts and energy of not only our industry peers, but other organizations to bring a spotlight on the need to provide greater equity in our healthcare system. At Genentech, we are committed to building trust by leading the industry forward in scientific innovations that drive better outcomes for patients and the community. Last summer, we did a study, the Genentech Health Equity Study, and we looked at over 2,000 patients, 1,000 from the general population and 300 each from what we considered medically disenfranchised. This is Hispanic, this is Black, this is LGBTQ, and this is low socioeconomic status, meaning people made less than $35,000. And you won't be surprised with what we found out. The study findings show that patients do not believe, these medically disenfranchised patients do not believe that all patients are treated fairly or equally in healthcare. The medically disenfranchised patients also believe this system is rigged against them. Medically disenfranchised patients are delaying or discontinuing routine care because they don't believe they are understood. And medically disenfranchised patients are not participating in clinical trial vaccinations due to this lack of trust. And we now have to stop tiptoeing around the issues of race and health inequity. The patients have told us we need to build back trust. And my call to action to all of us is that we need to be bold. We need to speak up and we need to do more to ensure communities of color are participating by encouraging our friends and our families, our loved ones to participate in clinical research to help our community. We need to know that products are safe and effective for Black and Latinx people. And we only do that by studying Black and Hispanic people. We need to stand up and ask these legislators and our industry and the hospitals and investigators and policymakers to actively build trust so that we can include Black and Latinx people in clinical research. And lastly, we have to step up and ask these insurance companies, employers, states, and federal government to provide medical coverage for patients participating in clinical research. My ask to you is that right now, this has to be um, more than a moment, but a movement. The goal here is to be proactive, build trust, magnify our efforts as change agents and put diversity and inclusion front and center on clinical research. Thank you.